Hello, good afternoon. So again, I'm Karen. I'm part, I was part of the um, research team that conducted this, the process evaluation of the senior high school implementation. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the background of the study, the methodology we used, um, show you some descriptive statistics, explain the logic model, and then the highlights of um, the findings and recommendations. Okay, so um, this study was conducted with NEDA and DepEd. Okay, so, so the study's objectives, first we, we um, looked at the program theory, we examined whether the program logic is plausible, whether it makes sense, and then we compared plans and actual implementation and tried to identify implementation challenges. We also assessed the intermediate outputs to determine if, they are, if the program is going um, in the right direction. And then we also try to identify promising interventions that can, be, um, that can be improved or scaled up. And then interventions that, that will also help to improve the implementation. And we also try to find areas of the program that can be used for a future or for a possible impact evaluation. So just a brief background on um, senior high school implementation. So this is part of the landmark legislation of the previous administration. So Republic Act 10533, or the Enhanced Basic Education Act, better known as the K-12 law. So this was enacted in 2013, but the full implementation of the program happened only in 2016 with the rollout of senior high school. So one of the key features of the law is a senior high school. So it's one of the um, most talked about. So it, th during that time, it was very contentious. There were many groups that were opposing its implementation. But anyway, since it's a law, so it was implemented in 2016. So this is the structure of the basic education curriculum now. So elementary is from kinder to grades, grade six, and then we now have junior high school. So um, what used to be first to fourth year high school, so that's now junior high school from grade seven to 10. And so they had exploratory TLE or technology and livelihood education. And then fr um, from grades nine to 10, the kids now specialize um, in, a, in a TLE subject. In senior high school, so this is grades 11 and 12. So um, the senior high school program, it adds two years to, hi to the high school program, so now, the entire basic education um, cycle is 12 years. Okay, so all senior high school students, they have eight core learning areas. So we can think of this as the general education, general education subjects in college. So uh, after they take the eight core learning areas um, that have 21 subjects, they are to select a track, select one from four tracks. So these are the academic track, tech voc, livelihood, sports, and arts and design. Under the academic track, there are, f there are six strands. So we need to remember the difference between the tracks and the strands. So under academic, so there's the GAS or the general academic strand, STEM, ABM, this is accountancy, business, business management, humans, humanities, and then maritime. So one, two, three. So there are five lang pala. And then under tech book, there's home economics, agri-fishery, industrial arts, ICT, and TVL maritime also. So this is how our basic education is currently structured under the K-12 bill. Okay, so for the methodology, um, our goal in doing our sa something was to capture, was to select respondents that would allow us to capture a diverse range of experience uh, of student experience. So we used the DepEd enrollment data for school year 2017 to 2018, and we did a random selection of schools based on several criteria. So we used the following categories. So based on school size, track offering, um, the area, urban or rural, senior high school type, and sector. So our additional um, considerations for the selection of our respondents where that the, the schools should be um, that, yeah, so the propor we took into account the proportion of the schools. So for example, the, there are many uh, schools offering, uh, there are many 
more schools in urban areas, then there should be more sample schools from urban areas. So that was how they were chosen. And then all island clusters must be represented. And then um, we, we specifically made sure that sports and arts, des arts and design schools are selected because there are only a few um, sports and arts and design schools. So after this random selection, we ended up going to these sites. So there were many uh, provinces in, in Luzon and Metro Manila also, and then those are the provinces in the Visayas and then Mindanao. So when we went to the sites, to the schools, so we talked to the school administrators, the school focal, the senior high school focal persons, because each school was supposed to have one. And then we talked, of course, to the teachers. So that's on the supply side. On the demand side, we talked to the students, to the grade, grade 11 and grade 12 students and their parents also. We also talked to um, DepEd officials, so former brother Army Luis Tros, uh, several undersecretaries and bureau representatives, regional office representatives and division office representatives. So those represented the different levels of implementation um, within DepEd. So this study is mostly um, qualitative. We used KIIs and FGDs, but we also did some computations using DepEd administrative data. And this was conducted from July to December of 2018. Okay, so the descriptive statistics will give us some idea of um, what the senior high school landscape looks like. It, so as of December 2017. So more than half or 58% of senior high school students are in DepEd schools, so meaning public schools. So I'd like you to pay more attention on the orange block on the side. So it, it's a summary. Okay, so in terms of enrollment, so it's just the same. So for grades 11 and 12, so this is just the breakdown of the enrollment but per grade level, um, more grade 11, grade 12 students are in DepEd schools. So the others are in private schools and state universities and, or local universities because uh, SUCs and LUCs also, there, there were SUCs and LUCs that also offered senior high school. In terms of enrollment by region and by sex, so, and this, it's just reflective of population size. So most of the students are from region 4A both for grades 11 and grade 12, and more, there are more female students than male students. Okay, in terms of track and strand offerings, so what this table shows us is that most of the schools, so most of DepEd schools, public schools, offer, are offering just one strand. And then for Sox and Lux, most offer two strands. So it's strands, not track, okay? So it could be just the academic track and then they're offering just one strand under the academic track. And then at most, so, so there are eight strands all in all, but there's just like 0.4%, 0.4% of the total senior schools offering senior high school um, that offer only uh, seven out of the eight strands. And then most of them uh, offer GAS and TVL. So if you remember, GAS is general academic strand. And then TVL, TechVoc, so it's those two are the most commonly offered, followed by ABM, Humes, and STEM. Um, for, so for DepEd schools, TVL and GAS. For private, um, ABM and GAS. So SUCs and LUCs, they, they offer uh, a more varied uh, they, they offer more strands. Okay, so divisions with no schools offering tracks. So this table shows us that there are school there are school divisions that don't offer some of the strands and tracks. Okay, so the numbers here on the side they show us that ABM only one per only one percent of the total divisions do not uh, offer that strand. Do you get it? It's quite tricky. So the numbers here, the percentages, show the number of schools that don't offer that strand. So for instance, maritime, 84% uh, 
uh, so it's 84% there. That means that 84% of the divisions don't offer that strand. Yes, don't don't offer the strand. So we can see that there's there there's a very small number of division offering that strand. So and ABM, so that's one percent. And Hume's, Hume's stem gas is 0.5 percent. It just means that those are the most offered, commonly offered strands. Okay, so now this this table shows the number of schools. So kanina divisions. This time it's a number of schools. So just the same. Yeah. So maritime 99 percent of schools not offering the strand. And then, but looking at the tracks, so TVL Sports, Arts, and ACAD, we will see that for sports and arts, 98% um, of the schools don't offer that strand. So those are the rarest, uh, but the, the, the most yeah, unavailable um, tracks. Okay. In terms of the, the distribution of um, students, so most are there's a large concentration of students in the academic track and TVL track. So maybe because there are few schools offering the sports and arts track, so there's enrollment in those schools are similarly low. Okay, so we will see in this graph, we see in this graph that um, the, the track enroll, enrollment to tracks is gendered, so some tracks are more female and others are more male. And we we can, like, for, for instance, arts is more female, sports more male. So yes, so it's also gendered. Okay, and then by strand, TVL and gas have the large concentrations of students. Um, distribution of SHS enrollment by strand. Yeah, so in depend schools, so most are enrolled in TVL, GAS, and Humes. All right, so we already said this before. GAS is the most popular. In terms of completion rates, so th there's actually a um, high completion rate for the, for, for the first batch of senior high school. So data on SHS completers as of 2018. So, but the highest of all is among the TVL. No, the sports. Yeah, so sports and TVL have the highest rates of completion. That means um, students graduate at that rate. But in general, so at the national level, there's a 93.4% completion rate. So it's pretty high. Now we look at, so, so that's the senior high school landscape. So now we go to the logic model so, or the program theory. So of course, these are the inputs or the, uh, are what the project needs, the program needs to be implemented. And then the activities that were um, undertaken by DepEd. So they, prepare, they had to prepare the senior high school curriculum, the teaching materials, and then they had to recruit and train teachers. So there was, uh, there was a very large need for teachers during that time, and we'll see later on that, that, that that's actually one of the one of areas of one of the areas of concern. And then they also need needed to build senior high schools, senior high schools, and then laboratories for schools for existing schools that are already that are offering senior high school procurement of equipment. They had to advocate for. The program, because as we know, um, there's opposition, so they need to let people know what the, what the program is about, what its benefits are. And then they also needed to build partnerships because this is a nationwide program. So the scope is very, it's very big. So um, implement, the implementation needed more than just DepEd and the direct stakeholders, like the, like the students and the parents' participation. So the output, so the new curriculum, of course, we know that this was done. So there was, there's a new curriculum, the teaching materials, teachers recruited, facilities, tools, equipment, partnerships formed. So essentially, in the end, <clears throat> in the end, we, all of these things, uh, the goal is to improve the basic education system. And 
But for this evaluation, of course, it's not possible to evaluate whether the final outcomes are achieved. So we tried to look at the intermediate outcomes, what, what we have achieved so far. So these are just the accomplishments in terms of the, um, of the outputs. But this was as of 2016, summer as of 2018. So for the budget, we see that until 2018, so it was increasing, but for, for, for last year, there was a slight decrease in the budget. And then for teachers, so there was a mass hiring of teachers and recruitment of teachers and also training. For the learning materials, we see that so that's as of 2016. That means that was the year the progress senior high school was rolled out. So when it was rolled out, we'll see that um, there is still learning materials that have not been developed, or we're still in the process of being developed. Okay, so classrooms were built, uh, facilities were also built, lab specifically laboratories and school heads were also trained. So these were the preparations that DepEd has done for the program. And the enrollment, so there were 1.4 million learners. So for 2016-2017, the following year, it's 2.7 million learners. So this is quite significant because during that time, so when we interviewed um, the former, rather Armin, so the former Deped Secretary, so they had this, this is an anecdote, no? so they had a board like counting how many were already enrolling because because they were facing backlash right because of the program so they wanted to see whether they would really meet the enrollment target and so by the time that the classes actually af even after uh, classes have officially started students were still enrolling and so they were able to to hit i think their target was only just one million but 1.4 million learners enrolled during the first year of senior high school. And to them, that was actually quite uh, an achievement. Okay, so 1.29 million of those learners um, were able to enroll through the ESC and the SHS voucher program. So these are tuition assistance that DepEd has provided. And then transition rate, so this is the movement from grade 10 to grade 11, it's 93.3 percent. So this is also significant. This means that 93.3 percent of those who graduated from junior high school actually enrolled to senior high school. Okay, and then for the first batch of senior high school graduates, so this is 2018, based on the 2018 data, so 1.2 million graduated. So for this assessment, just like uh, what Dr. Orbeta presented earlier, we looked at program theory, service delivery and utilization and program organization. We actually had so many findings that they won't fit in a 20 minute presentation when we were first presenting this, but we, in the interest of time, we're just summarizing the findings. So, well, the first is that, so this is a major program and um, Based on the accounts of the former um, DepEd officials, this was a project that was really years in the making. People were really, different advocates, advocates from different groups were, have been working on this for a long time, but it was only in 2016 that this was um, signed into law. So it was a big program, a nationwide program, but DepEd was able to to push through with the implementa implementation of senior high school. And we have to give credit to the DepEd bureaucracy for making it happen. So contrary to what, what the normal people um, thought, DepEd was actually prepared. So they had, well, at least at the management or um, central office level. So they really had preparations, they had technical working groups, and they tried to organize themselves so that each area of the implementation would be um, taken care of. So in theory, implementation was well planned. However, um, at the school level, so for some, for many reasons actually, that level of preparation failed to cascade. Uh, and some of the reasons are 
for example, procurement. So one of the one of the many issues in implementation is that schools were not yet uh, were not yet complete when um, classes started in 2016. And when we visited some of the schools, some of the sites, indeed, some classrooms or some school buildings were still being constructed, and that was in 20, 2018. So schools not yet finished, and many teachers, many respondents said that it was because of the procurement. Well, it's it's mainly procurement. Um, it's mainly a procurement challenge. So the same with in, with the uh, equipment, school materials. Many have not been delivered because of procurement issues. So with that level of preparation, people felt that the perception of several implementers, teachers, parents, students was that DepEd was not prepared for for senior high school. That's why there were ill feelings ill feelings towards the program. But not all of them actually were quite negative about the program. There were because there was a, a wide um, range of experiences. So there were those whose schools were not as prepared as the others, but there were some schools where the entire school was um, complete with all the learning materials, teachers were, were well trained. So those schools of course had a good experience with the first year of senior high school implementation. So certainly the program is facing many challenges, but many of those challenges are related, based on our analysis, those are related to, of course, um, the, the beginning of a new program. So systems are still being set up, and so those are merely birth pains. So, yeah, so, but those issues can be addressed. Uh, as implementation, just like what, what Sir Waves uh, said earlier, those can be addressed as soon as implementation pr procedures continue to stabilize and all the requirements, all the school requirements are delivered to them. So we don't know the status of, we, we're not really up to date as to the status of the, for example, delivery of the schools, but there's, during the time that we conducted the study, there, there was an and the element of ongoingness <laughs> of, of all the preparation. So yeah, building still being built and then um, learning materials still being developed. So these are the success factors. So I, I, I mentioned earlier that there were schools that had a good experience with the first year of implementation. And we saw that these were the main ingredients. So most of these are related to human resources. So teacher effort, quality of school leadership and management. So the principals, we met principals who were really proactive in searching for um, funds for their school. So both the teachers and principals where the DepEd could not provide what the school needs. So they tried to, to look for resources. They tried to build partnerships that could help them access um, additional resources for their, for their students. And then the quality of service rendered by the school's division's office. So of course the schools needed help from the school's division's offices. So some of the SDOs are, were more um, proactive in assisting the schools. And they had their own programs that could also he help raise resources for the schools. And then, yeah, so the communication lines between, a good, commu good communication lines between the SDOs and school heads were, um, were important or was an important factor in the success of a school. And then the last one, I think this is, I personally think that this is one of the good things that uh, the senior high school implementation has brought about. So the strong partnerships that, that were formed with other stakeholders and these include the LGUs, the communities and the industries. So there were some LGUs especially in the provinces, <coughs> who, who really cared about the senior high school. So when they knew that the school needed the building, so they would, um, they would look for sites where the school can, can build a school. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah, where <laughs> additional building can be put up. And then community also, so some would also pitch in their, some funds. So yeah, for, for additional resources and industry. So partnerships with industry would come in for the immersion. So after the 
so grade 12, after their academics, so they would have an immersion. So that's one of the components of the program. In the immersion, the students would have to, um, well, the schools needed to have a, would need to have a partner in the three. So for example, if the course or if the strand of the student is STEM, for instance. So some schools would partner with, although this is not a perfect example, but some schools would partner with the pharmacy, for instance. So kahit na STEM, kahit math yun, ang, ano nila, ang immersion nila ay sa, let's say, pharmacy because that's the most closely related um, industry in the area. So schools would form those partnerships with industry. So for another example is, this one's a good example. So for example, in Laguna, so di ba may industrial area doon? Tapos yung mga students, so TVL sila, and then IT, ICT yung strand nila. So the students would do their immersion in one of those um, ICT factories in Laguna. So, so that kind of relationship um, was strengthened because of the senior high school implementation. Okay, so this is what, this is, uh, among the schools that we visited, this is one of the, of the few that stood out because of, we consider this uh, a good, the best practice, well, among the sites we visited. So this is the Kalbayog Arts and Design School of Eastern Visayas. So Kalbayog, um, Kalbayog is in Samar. So it, it's home to the former, to the late director Chito Ronyo. So the art scene in Kalbayog is very much alive. So they thought that it would be good to have an arts and design school there. So parang yun yung magiging center sa Eastern Visayas, arts and design centers, Eastern Visayas. So this is a school built in the middle of a Bukiran, Bukirin. So nasa, gilid siya ng, nasa gitna siya ng Bukid. And then, yeah, so it was established with the support of officials of the region. Yun nga, because it's region 8, that wanted to put up that school. So it, it was intended to be a, a regional school. So the LGU um, provides, because nasa bukad nga siya, so transportation was kind of challenging. So there, there were no transportation available, actually, public transport, transportation. So the mayor provides, uh, there's, provides a jeep for the students. So like they meet up in the city proper, may, may meet up time, pick up time. We meet sila, tas lahat sila sabay sabay pupunta sa school. And then, may uwi and then may time lang. So, pabalik naman ng city. So, that's being provided by the LGU, by the mayor for free for the students. And then, meron din na yun, cameras, musical instruments, because we know that yung mga media, um, communication and media equipment, those do not come cheap, right? So, dahil hindi nila hindi ma-afford ng school yun, so ang nag-provide na lang ay yung LGU. Yun. The principal is also proactive in forging partnerships, looking for um, partnerships. So, examples ng partnerships nito, it's also for the immersion component of the program. So, naghahanap sila actively, saan, saan ba pwede mag-immersion yung mga students? And, yeah, and it, it was also a good thing that he's also an artist because he knows what the students need as an artist. And the teachers specialize and are trained in the art form they are teaching. We, we saw this as a good example, as a good practice, because one of the issues that were raised um, by the other respondents was that, especially by the students, was that the teachers were not really well versed in what they're teaching. So for example, um, kunwari, meron kasing sa humanities, may philosophy subject na yung mga students. Pero the teachers, because they're, Wala namang, ano, wala namang um, Bachelor of Education in Secondary Education major in Philosophy. Wala namang ganun. So that means that the teachers, kumbaga parang their specializations are not aligned with what they're teaching. So the students notice that because of the quality of instruction that they're getting from their teachers. So in this school, uh, for example, dance yung subject. Yung teacher nila doon, Dance talaga yung, yung degree niya nung college. At saka talagang practicing siya. I mean, member siya ng dance troupe. Yung or kunwari drama. So talaga yung teacher nila ay theater. Um, theater, ano ba tawag sa kanya? 
so actor or actress ganun. so there's no mismatch kumbaga dun sa subject thought and yung specialization of the teacher and then the school also institutionalized a program regularly inviting artists to the to the school as resource persons so this is part of um kumbaga parang in addition to what the curriculum provides parang ito na yung extra steps ng ng school to make sure na nabibeef up yung kung ano yung pinaprovide ng curriculum. Lalo na because hindi naman uh, based sa books yung learning ng mga arts and design students. Yun. Tapos they were able to identify relevant partners for the immersion. And their partners are not the like STEM pharmacy type of partnership, but yun, cultural center talaga, radio station, and other... Uh, I think meron pa nga newspaper eh, because they also have students specializing in um, journalism. So, yeah, so this is one of the good schools that we visited. Okay, program gains. Yeah, as I mentioned, enrollment exceeded expectations. So, there, there was a lot of negativity around the program, but people were, uh, were, delighted, uh, were pleasantly surprised that enrollment exceeded expectations. And then, in some areas, so Modular delivery is available. So, para tong yung alternative learning program na so hindi ka lang umatend every day sa school nung pumasok every day sa school ng student. So, yung may ganong delivery, it has worked to bring back dropouts and potential dropouts to school. So, the program was able to keep students in school. And then, academically challenged but skilled students remain in school. So, how? Um, we got this from the experience of TVL students. Kasi, so normally, meron kasi sila mga, I don't know if it's cultural or parang, okay, TVL students, yung mga napupunta dyan, yung hindi masyadong, uh, based on what we got from them, ha, parang feeling nila, yung hindi masyadong academically inclined, napupunta sa TVL. Kasi di ba yun yung mas, yung, yung, yun nga, um, hands yung gagamitin, yung skills, ganyan. So those students before, dahil hindi sila na encourage pumasok because they're not good academically. Now, dahil ganyo sila pumasok sa school because nag excel sila dun sa inaaral nila sa tech book. That's where they're good at, and because of that, they're able to stay. Uh, they're they're able to remain in school. And then the program has been able to mobilize different sectors for the implementation. So this is similar to what I discussed earlier. Na different stakeholders were able to come together to um, make this program happen. So, hmm. uh, in terms of the challenges, so uh, program, in terms of the theory of change or the program logic, I, we thought that DepEd was too optimistic about the adequacy of resources and maybe the systems, adequacy of the systems to deliver uh, the resources that the schools need. Uh, there was also, at the beginning, there was also a lack of program awareness and understanding in some areas despite the advocacy activities that were carried out by DepEd. So our recommendations were to make realistic assessments um, on the likelihood of delivery of program inputs. So ito yung schools, ito yung mga learning materials, equipment. And because most of the problems with the delivery of these inputs have had to do with the procurement processes, um, we, we recommend a review of the procurement systems, but then this might have to go beyond just DepEd because we know that it's a problem everywhere. So DepEd just ha has to continue program advocacy and dialogue with different stakeholders um, yet to improve their understanding of the program and to rally support. So from, from the perspective of teachers, so these are mostly from the perspective of teachers and students and division offices. So the teachers express difficulties in delivering the curriculum because of insufficient guidelines. So kanina we said that at the management or uh, central office level, they felt that preparations were sufficient, but these failed to cascade to the, to the schools, right? And it's mainly because of insufficient guidelines, insufficient guidelines, inadequate materials, and preparation. So although there were trainings, Shemper mass trainings, yun, because they had to be, the trainings had, had to be done um, ng maramihan, 
So maybe the quality of the training suffered. Uh, and then, yeah, we know what happened to the materials. Ayun, in terms of the guidelines, so those were not really clear for the teachers. So what happened was that there were different um, interpretations of what the guidelines were saying. And those resulted in different um, practices in schools, even in, how to, in terms of how to deliver like, a subject, whether it's going to be, for example, in practical research, nila, they had practical research one and two. So how per semester? Bayan, or may mga ganong issues. That, so there, was a there wasn't a clear understanding of those things because of the guidelines. And then the students expressed lack of choice in terms of tracks and strands due to supply side issues. So students were supposed to select their strands and tracks, their strands. But because, of, uh, because they had no choice, many said that they had no choice. So for example, a school offering just ABM. So even though the students would like to specialize in STEM, for example, because that's their inclination, because the selection has to be, had to be um, uh, ang tawag dito? Parang aligned siya dapat sa interest ng student eh. Dahil nga may, may student choice. But because the strand limited was just, uh, the strand offered was limited to ABM. So wala na silang magawa. Yun na lang yung kukunin na lang um, strand. So varying extent of performance of program function. So this is more for the SDOs, for the schools division offices. So the differences in their, in the level of assistance rendered to the schools is mainly because there were some schools division offices that did not know they were supposed to support the schools. Or parang hindi nila alam ano yung level of support that they were supposed to give. So it, also, it's also, it was also because of the differences in interpretation of the guidelines. Okay, so diverse program experiences among students from different schools in different areas. So yeah, our recommendations so there's a need to review the curriculum content. And when we were presenting all the results already, I think there was, also, there was already an ongoing review of the curriculum. So at least that's being addressed by DepEd. And then address the inadequacies in program inputs, especially teachers, learning resources, ensure the availability of all tracks and major strands, at least in the provincial and regional level. So, Earlier, we saw that there are divisions that do not offer all the tracks, right? And there are divisions that, that offer, hindi naman walang in-offer completely, pero like isang track lang out of the many. So you can imagine that maraming bata na hindi nakakapasok dun sa, sa, sa strands na gusto talaga nila. Okay, so work towards standardization where possible to minimize the diversity in students' program experience. And this would also help the teachers. So it will provide, I think that, we think that standardization would um, provide clarity you know, for the teachers as well. And then strengthen career guidance in schools. So um, career guidance is one of the important elements also of um, senior high school, but we found that many schools actually don't have um, strong, they don't have career guidance counselors actually, because in general, there's a lack of guidance counselors in the Philippines. So there's no career guidance function in many schools. Um, we also recommend a, a further assessment of the work immersion component. Because of the work immersion, so some schools, what, ha what would happen is that, okay, gumraduate na yung bata, tapos hinahire na sila nung kung saan sila nag-immersion. So yun yung, we have, we had cases of students already, like pa pag-graduate na sila, tapos next ano hindi mo na sila magka-college kasi they're going to work for for wherever they did their immersion so explore the possibility of supporting students in taking nc exams nc is national certification so ito yung sa, sa tesda so after kasi ng ng tvl well this is mostly for tvl because sila yung kailangan magtake ng ng exam ng nc 2 Ganyan. Pero we found that um, NCE exams, well, they, had, they have to pay like 30,000 pesos pa nga yung iba, sabi 30,000. So, hindi afford ng students. So, students, of course, if they don't take the NC, then 
paano nila ma-apply yung natutunan nila sa TVL? So, it might be um, good to consider supporting students in taking the NC exam. So, maybe provision of financial assistance to, to take the, the exam. Uh, and then, uh, there's a note here that the issue of um, the lack of diversity of programs, of strands in schools, it is addressed by the joint development, joint delivery voucher program. So it's for TVL. So kung walang TVL dun sa school nung, nung student, ang pwedeng gawin, bibigyan siya ng voucher. So that's like assistance, financial assistance, di ba? Para makapag-enroll siya in another institution. So that institution is not limited to school. So pwede siyang, for example, pwede siyang industry partner na nag nagpa-provide ng training, pwede ganun. Pwede rin na sa ibang schools yon. So, that student, kung walang TVL dun sa school niya, pwede siyang mag-apply, mag-enroll sa TVL ng another school offering the joint delivery voucher program. Yung may ganyang partnership. Okay, so, we also recommend addressing the issues related to the voucher program. So, Merong issue ng, the issue of um, untimely release of the benefits of the voucher. So that's, that was raised. So I think we need to, and the schools are complaining. Well, the private schools, because most of these schools are small schools relying on the voucher program. So that's where they will get their operational funds. So because the government is not, DepEd is not able to release on time the vouchers, then they suffer kasi wala silang perang pang sustain ng operations. That's why um, they need to address this voucher program issue. And then, yes, yeah, so, from the perspective of students, uh, of teachers, yeah, so we know that, we've heard of this, teachers are complaining of so many administrative tasks that their quality of teaching is already suffering. So we heard that from senior high school teachers. Some also feel that the curricular content is too ambitious and, and designed, to, designed for advanced learners. So it, this is where they raised that, for instance, they have a pre-calculus subject. So it, it, for them, it felt that this subject is designed for, schools, for students of science high schools and not of the regular high schools. So there were those concerns. Yeah, so they had difficulty con contextualizing activities and this was worsened by lack of resources. So for example, may mga examples daw sa, sa mga books na hindi nila ma-provide kasi wala naman silang resources para ipakita yun sa students. And then they also said that students were unprepared for senior high school material. So they had research subjects, but there were students who could not even, um, who could not even write a decent English sentence. So, yeah, so that's a problem. That, that, that's the teacher's problems. How do you make them write a research paper if they don't have the basics? And then students' different competency levels upon senior high school entry. So, yeah, evident in computer liter liter literacy subjects and in private schools. So, they have computer subjects, ICT subjects in senior high school, but not everyone na nanggaling sa junior high school, hindi lahat ay, hindi lahat ng schools may computers, hindi lahat ay nag-take ng ICT subjects. And their subjects are not the usual Microsoft Office subjects, but programming. So, ganun na yung pinag-aaralan nila ngayon sa computer subjects. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, they, they mentioned students' difficulties with research and performance tasks. Performance tasks, these are like the major um, submissions of the students from the perspective of students so many said that they experienced culture shock so because the environment was different for most so para na silang college and although yung age nila supposedly pang college naman na talaga pero they felt there was a difference and then they did mostly self-study and reporting um, Many mentioned that it might be because of the teacher's in well unpreparedness, for instance, so that teachers made them report too much and 
the teachers did not give inputs. So they felt that they teach more than teachers do. They had too many requirements also. Um, looking at the, at the curriculum, they had so many subjects than, than in the former um, curriculum. And they felt that because of that, their, their quality, the quality of their learning is sacrificed. So, nilagay namin sa box because we wanted to highlight yung sa arts and design and sports students. Because these students, so aside from doing their academics, they also need to prepare or to practice for their um, theater or dance or whatever arts ano, um, subject. And yung mga athletes, of course, they need to, to, to practice then. So on top of the regular academic workload. Um, yun. So in terms of difficult subjects, they mentioned na research. Ayun, research is one of the difficult subjects, philosophy and pre-calculus. Yeah, so for, arts, for the arts and design and sports students, it was important for them that they get exposed to different activities. So, for example, kung art students ka, syempre, important yung nagpa-perform ka. You're able to perform. If you're an artist, you're a painter, you're able to exhibit your work. Um, and kung ano ka naman, athlete ka, it's important for them to be able to compete. Kunwari sa palarong pambansa or other mga, ano, mga ganong competition. And not all of them are given opportunities to, to do these things. Yung kaninang ano natin um, best practice na school sila so they they're able to do th to give those opportunities for their students yeah so they have this sentiment that teachers and other students look down on them because they feel like nasa arts and sports ka so ibig sabihin siguro hindi ka matalino parang may ganung perception so i guess it means that there's the understanding of why there's there are different tracks, hindi pa clear sa mga students and also sa teachers. So that's also one of the areas that um, DepEd has to work on. Okay, in terms of program organization, so there's a perceived confusion with program gu guidelines as mentioned earlier, and the need for better coordination with external partners. So for example, CHED and TESDA. Uh, so the coordination issues we, we found before, yung sa, sa CHED, um, so when students graduate, paano yun? Pwede ba silang, for example, gumraduate siya from TechVoc and the student decides to enroll in college, pwede ba siya mag-enroll mag sa isang academic uh, subject? For example, psychology. So from, from sports, magsa-psychology ka. So there was an issue before na, aba hindi pwede, kailangan pang mag-bridging mag-bridging subjects ng students kasi hindi nag-match yung what, what you learned in high school and yung requirement ng psychology. And it was an issue because the students had to shoulder the bridging subjects. So that had to be clarified before. And then yung coordination with TESDA naman, uh, the teacher said that the curriculum for, the, or the syllabus for, uh, for TVL and yung in-offer ng TESDA parang may either may duplication or may, hindi nagmamatch kumbaga parang may gap kasi hindi na, hindi pala na provide ng senior high school pero ni-require ng ng TESDA so in terms of learning hindi nagmamatch yung content ng curriculum so those um, had to be uh, ironed out with those agencies and in general one of yeah so human resources are inadequate so even though there was a mass hiring of teachers still um, they were deped was lacking teachers like guidance counselors and other school staff actually so apart from those challenges there are more challenges so i already mentioned the child policy on bridging remedial subjects the support to tvl graduates and yeah updating of teacher education well i also mentioned it earlier that there's a mismatch between the teacher qualification, the specialization, and the subjects. So there might be a need for, for DepEd to talk to um, teacher education institutions so that they would be able to update their curriculum for teachers 
para makapag makapag-develop din sila ng program for teachers who will eventually teach philosophy or who will teach um, some other subject na, na wala naman before sa existing curriculum nila. Tapos voucher program, yeah, we already touched on this before. So yeah, that, that's um, the implementation of senior high school.